two American scientists are lost in the swirling maze of past and future ages during the first experiments on America's greatest and most secret project, the Time Tunnel. Tony Newman and Doug Phillips now tumble helplessly toward a new fantastic adventure somewhere along the infinite corridors of time. Civil War uniforms. This doesn't look like southern or eastern United States. Some of the battles were fought in the west. Well, there's one way to find out. Private August Schmidt. Enlisted St. Louis, Missouri, 1868. It's just after the Civil War. Uh, 1868, right in the middle of nowhere. be the same ones who got those soldiers. Slip. Come on, we better keep moving. Look, we're not soldiers. We have no guns, no, no knives. Than English. We're not enemies. You will die. Tie them up.
do you make out there? Cavalry, post-Civil War. How do you know it's after the Civil War? Oh, by the cavalry guidance. The only mounted U.S. troops were dragoons until the Civil War. But is that tune? Any time between 1868 and 1890. The Indian Wars period. We're getting a time fix. I still can't locate them in space yet. This is General Kirk. Call the Indian Bureau. I want someone from the History Department who's familiar with the Indian Wars period on the Western Plains. I want him today. I have a time reading. Summer 1876. But you've lost the image. Crazy horse. Kill many soldiers. Kill you, maybe. I told you we're not soldiers. You come with soldiers? Ah, you will tell me. Where are the rest of Yellow Hair's men? Yellow Hair? Now, you're mistaken. We do not come with soldiers. We do not know anything about soldiers. You lie. Kill if not talk truth. How many men with yellow hair? I don't know yellow hair. Now you talk truth. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hold still, I'll cut you loose. Where's the rest of your outfit, son? I'm the rest of it. You're coming back. Take off, I'll be right behind you. gave up and went back to their camp. Who are you? Trumpeter Tim McGinnis, sir. B Troop, 3rd Cavalry. Where's the rest of your outfit? You saw them, sir. They're all dead. We was carrying dispatches from General Crook when we got jumped. Speaking of jumping, we better be on our way. Now, wait a minute. I've got to help my friend. I'm going back. But it would be three against you. They won't hurt him. Not yet, anyway. They'll take him back to their main camp and show him off. And then what? Well, by that time, we'll have enough help to get him out. Help from whom? From the 7th Cavalry, of course. The men I was taking my dispatches to. All right, let's get a move on. How far is it? Well, it's only about a day's walk. A day? Well, we've got to do better than that. We'll need some horses. Now, you wait here. Wait? I didn't join up to wait. I'm going with you. All right, come on.
General Kirk, Dr. Charles Whitebird of the State University, Dr. Rand McGregor. How do you do? Oh. Oh, I was expecting someone from the Indian Bureau. I was contacted by the Bureau. Doctor, can you identify any of these tribes? Well, uh, those are Arapahoes. Uh, Unpapa, Grand Teton, Santee Indians, Cheyenne, Blackfeet, and the Sioux. Those are the most authentic films I've seen. Doctor, those aren't films. That is the living past. The living past. Those are not films. The technique and engineering are classified, Doctor. Please just assume that we're right. That what you're seeing there is reality. I must say the proof would be fascinating. All right. What would you like to know about them? Can you tell us the reason for the meeting? What they're doing? My relatives are cooking up a big pot of trouble, I'd say. That's right, General. I'm pure blood soup. There's Tony. Lost him. Why do you come here? You do not belong here. This is Sioux land. The land belongs to all of us. This is my land as well as yours. You lie. Let us kill him now. Wait. All the time talk killing. Crazy horse, you have killing fever in your blood. You talk strange. Other men say land belong to me. I too say land belong to all. He talk with snake's tongue. Plays trick on you. I say what I mean. He very strange white man. Ask him about yellow hair. I told you I don't know yellow hair. See how he lies. Everyone know yellow hair. That is true. Everybody know yellow hair. You say not know him. You not talk true. He is your prisoner. Your 
period is midsummer, 1876, shortly before June 25th of that year. How can you be so sure? General George Armstrong Custer. On June 25th, he and his entire command were killed in a battle with the Plains Indians. Well, if all goes well, Tom, I shall be a candidate for the presidency of the United States. If all goes well. You're stretching your orders a little bit, George. <laughs> I have always stretched my orders. How the devil do you suppose I became a brigadier when I was only 21? I don't recall asking you here, gentlemen. General, it's about our orders, sir. Perfectly clear, Major Reno. Reveille at 3.30, boots and saddles at 5. And 100 rounds of carbine and 45 rounds of pistol ammunition to be distributed to each man. General, you must not attack. Are you presuming to question my orders, Captain Benteen? Your instructions from General Terry are explicit. You are not to attack the hostiles, but wait until Gibbons and Crook come up with their commands. You've been in the army long enough to know instructions are not orders. Sir, if you insist on attacking, I shall send a full report of this action to General Terry. The army is no place for cowards. Captain Benteen. <laughs> Benteen's an excellent company commander, but he's uh, a little hot-headed, wouldn't you say? Gentlemen, now, my specific plans are... How far is the cavalry camp? Well, I'm not sure. But we go south, that way. General, we don't know how many there are. What do you want, soldier? I have word from General Crook for General Custer. Dispatches, General. Sir, I have word from General Crook. Well, let's have it. The lieutenant was carrying the dispatches when we got hit by hostiles. He gave them to me by word of mouth before he and the rest of the platoon was wiped out. Go on. General Crook was attacked on the upper rosebud. He suffered heavy losses and was forced to turn back to regroup his command. He will be unable to join up with you on the appointed date. That's it, sir. You hear that? Crook was ambushed and can't come up. That changes everything. My instructions are to hold these hostiles at all costs. In my judgment, that means we shall have to fight. You'd better tell the men to get their rest. Tomorrow will be a busy day. Very good, sir. That'll be all, Trumpeter. Report to the first sergeant for billeting. Yes, sir. Who are you? If you're a journalist, you're just in time to witness Custer's greatest victory. I'm Douglas Phillips. I'm not a newspaper man, sir. And what are you doing here? I'm a traveler. My friend, another civilian, and I were attacked by Indians. He was captured. Trumpeter McGinnis has assured me that I could get help from you. Trumpeter McGinnis has assured you. Mr. Phillips, the Army has more pressing business than rescuing civilians. Tomorrow, perhaps, if he's still alive. General, the Army's mission is to aid and protect civilians in this country. Don't tell me my mission, mister. Yes, sir. If you'll give me a horse and some weapons, I can go after him myself. Sergeant! Put this man under arrest. See that he's held under guard and can't communicate with anyone. It's for your own good as well as mine, Phillips. But what about my friend? If I were to let you go, you'd be captured. Under the threat of torture, you might reveal my strength and position to the hostiles. Take him away, Sergeant. <laughs> I have a time fix, Dr. Swain. June 24th, 1876. 
The battle takes place tomorrow. You better get your friends out of there fast. Well, the problem in making a time transfer is that we have to have an exact spatial, that is, geographical fix on the subject. Can you give us a pinpoint location, Doctor? Well, we all know that Custer camped on Muddy Creek the night before the battle. But we don't know the exact location. If I could only cite some landmark... Do you know the country that well? I've made a life study of it. Do you know where the Indian camp was? No, it covers too big an area to give you pinpoint location. Mr. Phillips. Tim. Going against my military oath to help you out of here. I'll divert the sentry. The horses are about 10 yards behind the tent. I got one saddle. Good evening, soldier. Can you spare a chaw? Gets a fellow down not having the comfort of a mouthful of tobacco. Thank you. This is pretty good tobacco. Here you are. Can you keep him in view? I think so. Why? He'll be crossing Little Bighorn terrain. If he should pass a landmark that I can positively identify... Well, that would give us our fix. Right. We're losing him. You've got to hold him, man. It's no use. We're slipping out of phase. I save you from the fire because you call me brother. Because you are brave. But Crazy Horse is right. You must prove yourself worthy to be one of the Sioux. I don't understand. You must fight. If you win, I will adopt you. Lose and you will die. Come. Take your weapons. Yellow Elk will fight you.
brother afraid to kill? Brothers do not kill brothers. Truly, you are my brother. It's Doug. A cavalry patrol. They're after him. What will Custer do to him if they catch him? Custer was hard on anyone who crossed him. Not as hard as the Indians would be. There. I've got him back again. Sorry, my order's out of place. You're under arrest. Suppose you made it to that Indian village. What in the world did you hope to accomplish? I don't know. Anything that one friend could do for another. Can you hold that image? Do you see something? That rock. In the background, can you make the image clearer? That's it. It's known as Indian Arch. It's on the route that Custer took to Little Bighorn. I can place it accurately on the geodetic survey map. We'll get the maps for you at once. We're picking up Tony again. Listen to me. I have a great magic. I can tell you now what will happen tomorrow and after tomorrow. I know that if you fight tomorrow, you'll win. You'll kill Yellow Hair and all his men. You say this? It's true. I believe him. Good. Then we will fight. But even as Sitting Bull says, many more white men will come. And in the end, they will destroy all the Sioux nations. And even you, my brother, will die because of this. All men must die. I will not run from this place. Then talk to the soldiers. Don't fight. Crazy horse. If Yellow Hair comes to this place to talk, then we will talk to him. If he comes to fight, then we will kill him and all his men. The council is ended. I will think about what you said. If you were a soldier, I'd have you court-martialed and shot. I have half a mind to do it anyway. From now on, you will ride where you can be watched. May I ask where we're riding, sir? To find and engage the Sioux with the little big horn. And today is the day. What's wrong, Mr. Phillips? By tonight, you and all the men with you will be dead. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, you're daft. All right, then humor a deaf man. This boy's not in your command. Please leave him behind. Sir, don't listen Silence! to me. Silence! McGinnis will ride with me as my trumpet and messenger. General, you've got that. That is all, Mr. Phillips, dismissed. Well, 
go. Let me ask you something, Captain. Are you a married man? Do you have any children? A son who is seven. In eight years, he'll be as old as Tim McGinnis. Would you want him to ride with a man like Custer? No. Why do you ask? I was a favor to the boy, to me. Will you try to get him assigned to your command today? Do you know something about this campaign I don't, Mr. Phillips? If I were to tell you what I know, you'd say the same thing Custer did. That I'm daft. I'll see what I can do about the boy. Thank you. This is the place. Costa's route leads directly under this rock on his way to the battle. You have those coordinates, Ray? Mm, I have it, General. And this will be the fix. What about Tony? Dr. Whitebird, is there any way we can get a fix on Sitting Bull's camp? Let me see the camp again. Perhaps somehow I can identify the grounds. getting ready for battle. They do not trust yellow hair. Send word to him that you don't want to fight. No good. If yellow hair has blood in his eyes, he will not want peace. Then let other men know that you wanted peace, that it was Custer who made this fight and not your people. What other men would believe us? I will make them believe you. This talk is useless. It's not useless to have all men know the truth. My white brother's right. If we fight Custer and we beat him, people will say that we started the battle. Our memories will be blackened. I will do as you say. I will send you to Yellowhair. Take one of the horses and go quickly. Time is short. Tell him that I will be in my teepee. Go. It is mistake to send white man. I have decided. Did Custer receive a peace offer from Sitting Bull? There's no written record of his having received such an offer. But it is said that Sitting Bull remained in his lodge and did not take part in the battle. Who was the savage? And who the civilized man? With savages on both sides. The white man goes to talk peace. It would be better if Yellow Hair has no chance to ask him questions. Perhaps something will happen to white man before he reaches soldiers. I can't hold the image. When shall I activate? You'll just have to estimate when you'll come abreast of the arch. Activate.
Kenji. Changwoda Makota. Release him. I just told him I'm a Sioux. Let him go. It is true, my brother. What is this place? It is a place you were brought to prevent you from killing a good man. It is a place beyond the sunrise. Is this the place of the great spirit? It is a place of great mystery. Listen to me. Today our people will kill many soldiers. But many will come to punish our people for what they do. It is better to die fighting. It is better to live. They will not let us live as our fathers lived before us. Do not cling to the old ways because they're old. If the new ways are good, learn them. And where are the good men who will teach us good ways? Sinning Bull is one. Another is the man you wish to kill. Go back the way you came. And think of what I've told you. Give me your tomahawk. Go. Do you have an exact time lock on Yellow Elk? To the microsecond, I can send you back to the exact time and place. Do it. Set up temporary camp, keep an eye on the civilian. Rest, gentlemen. No wait here for our scouts to come in. Is there anything wrong, Joe? I had a thing like this before. Come on, George, you don't believe in that kind of thing. Of course not. But still... You know, Custer Luck has... carried me a long way. I used it all up. Is this the day the luck runs out? <laughs> cobwebs, my boy, cobwebs. We'll thrash old Sitting Bull and his band of hostiles and ride back to Fort Lincoln and glory.
Captain Benteen. What about Tim McGinnis? I'm sorry I couldn't do a thing. You've got to keep him from going with Custer. What's the matter? I heard you talking to the captain. Take Trumpeter McGinnis out of the fight and put him back where he won't get hurt. Are you trying to ruin my military career? Tim, it's for your own good. To take me out of a place of honor? Don't you understand what this means to me? Why, if I could kill a couple Indians or three, why, well, they might even make me a trooper. And then it's just a step up to corporal stripes, and then on to a sergeancy, and then I could... One of these days, you'd be general of the army, right? And don't think it hasn't happened before. It's all a matter of distinguishing yourself in front of the proper eyes. So I'll thank you, Mr. Phillips, for staying out of my business. I want to see General Custer. Look, I've got to see the general. Tony, you made it. Hey, you made it too. What's going on out here? Speak up. Who are you? The name is Newman, sir, Anthony Newman. I've just come from Sitting Bull's camp. And still alive? Is this your missing friend? He says he'll stay in his quarters. And if you come to him, he'll talk peace with you. And you think I should accept his offer? I suppose. A wise man would. But I know you won't. Sitting Bull has more warriors than you can handle, General. Captain Benteen! Yes, sir. Put both these men under close guard. If either even looks like he's trying to escape, kill him! Yes, sir. It's obvious both these men are renegades. When I've settled some Sioux hash, I shall have them tried and hanged. Officers will meet in five minutes. General! It's no use, Tony. He's lost in a dream of glory. Take these men out of here. <laughs> Italians. Major Reno, you will attack the lower end of the village with three troops. Attack across the riverbed. General, my trumpet is down sick. I need a replacement. Randy in hot water will put him back in the saddle. Very good, sir. Benteen, you will command two troops in the reserve. Boots and saddles in five minutes. Sir. <laughs> Pick it up, Sergeant. Pick it up. Seventh Cavalry standard doesn't belong in the dust. Trumpeter McGinnis. Sir. Fall out and report to Major Reno. He needs a trumpeter. But, General, sir, I'd rather ride with you. Going to be any kind of a soldier, lad. Best learn to obey orders. Yes, sir.
keep them between you, the rear the column. are ready. We wait for Sitting Bull. Where is the one who carried the message to Yellowhair? He has not come back. War brings war. Peace brings peace. I will stay in my teepee. do I say does the general stretch an order now and then you bet he does well so did I I'll get to Major Reno soon enough I think there's something wrong with my horse Tony is it bad be fighting the Indians, not each other. Tim, where's Reno's battalion? He's crossing the little bighorn to attack. All right, let's get mounted and get going. Wait a minute, I don't take orders from you. If you do not, I'll get on that horse. <laughs>
General Cut will come to the rescue. I don't think so, Tim. Major Reno. Good luck, Tim. I hope you make sight. I will. Like sitting bull. Good. You and we are brothers. Yes. And also those in big tunnel with fire up in sky. I think like them. You go now. Tunnel? What kind of tunnel? Go quick before you get same like yellow hair. some mistake here with oh. <laughs> You'd be better off if I killed you here and now. Devil's Island. Thank you. 